Hello there guys and welcome to this Explain 11 video. Today we're going to be taking a look at FS Flying School 2017 for Explain. This plugin in my opinion is probably the most entertaining and educational plugin for Explain. It works for both Explain 11 and Explain 10 and essentially what it is is a set of instructors that will help guide you throughout the different phases of flight starting from the startup procedure all the way to landing. Now those instructors will monitor uh, your compliance with proper startup procedure, uh, your takeoff, cruise, landing, and not only that, they will tell you where you've done well and where uh, you need improvements. Now what we're gonna be essentially doing in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the FS Flying School interface. I'm gonna take you through the settings and then we're gonna take it for a short flight. We are currently situated at Salt Lake City Airport in the state of Utah, and I've created some photoreal scenery for you guys to enjoy along the course of this video. The FS Flying School interface is quite intuitive and easy to use. The information tab here provides you with help and tips on getting started with FS Flying School. The pilot tab provides you with the ability to create your own pilot profile and select the sound of your instructor. You can also have background chatter, uh, background humor, uh, as well as have your instructor monitor weather, the monitor the use of flights, nav radios, and crosswind. The flight plan is where you specify the transition altitude and your V speeds for your instructor to uh, monitor, as well as tell FS Flying School when uh, is a flight complete? When should the plugin consider the flight as complete? And the first time you run FS Flying School, it will generate the runway data, but then if you install new scenery, then you should uh, use this uh, option here to generate the runway data. In terms of the aircraft, now the list of supported aircraft are included in the manual and uh, you can refer to the manual for all these supported aircraft. And I guess, uh, you know, the guys at uh, FS Flying School are constantly adding support for new aircraft. Uh, a lot of the Coronado aircraft are supported. Uh, but in this, in this particular tab, you can uh, select what items are monitored. So I have everything monitored in terms of the um, engines as well as the lights. The logbook is where you're gonna come back after your flight to see how well you've done. And it's gonna include information about your taxi speed, your takeoff, your landing, how well and safe your G's were uh, during flight, um, how accurate your, um, you know, your compliance was to the startup procedures and so on and so forth. And in the settings tab, uh, now, FS Flying School has a couple of plugins, one of which is already included in 2017. That is the weather plugin, uh, or the weather add-on, beg your pardon. And the um, there's another one, uh, another uh, add-on, which is the voice add-on. It gives you the ability to actually speak to your instructors. Uh, I do not have that add-on as of yet, uh, but this is where you set it up. Spoken tips. Now, it's actually a lot of fun uh, having those ticked, uh, the simulator uh, tips as well as the aviation tips. Uh, you can hear a lot of very useful information during flight, but for the purpose of this video, as I will be talking uh, to you guys, I've turned them off because they kind of come at random times, uh, but they're very educational, very useful, lots of fun to listen to. So I highly recommend that you have them on during your flights. So what I have is instant help and weather tips. And the rest of this uh, is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Now, one thing um, on the installation of FS Flying School, if you do not have XPUI PC installed, FS Flying School will automatically install it for you. So there's no need for you to worry about anything. Okay, let's go ahead and connect to FS Flying School and take it for a short flight. FS Flying School connecting. 
All right, so we are in the default Cessna 172. Let's go ahead and... Remember that if the aircraft has been stored for a long time, we must be on the lookout for obstructions or damage caused by insects or birds. We have to keep a sharp eye on the wind direction and strength today, so let's make sure that when we enter the runway we know its speed and direction, as it may have changed and be different from ATIS. Okay. Battery is on. Beacon is on. Uh, parking brake is set. Uh, let's do mixture rich, crack throttle, fuel pump is on. Master battery on when starting, fuel pump on when starting the engine. Avionics master switch on please. Let's have the nav lights on. Alright, and let's go ahead and check our flaps. Let's move your flight control fully forward and fully backward a few times so we can check that the function of the elevator is free and correct. Flaps check complete. Elevator check complete. Aileron check complete. Rudder check complete. Okay. So let's turn on our transponder. In order to use a VOR navigation aid, you'll need to tune its frequency on your NAV1 radio. Okay, so we have the uh, arriving runway uh, ILS frequency set up here, uh, all right, and we have also ages. So let's listen to ages real quick. Salt Lake City INTL information, Juliet. 2200 Zulu weather. Wind 230 at 8, visibility more than 10. Sky clear. It's important to identify the nav aid that you've tuned on nav 1, and to do this, press the nav 1 button on the audio control panel in your aircraft. Okay, so everything is ready to go now, so let's go ahead and turn on the taxi light. And what else do we need? We don't need anything for now. Let's uh, lean the mixture. Remember that if you don't know Morse code, you can still positively identify the nav aid that you're receiving. Okay. Just Parking compare break. the long dashes and short dots that you can hear with the Morse code printed on the chart for the nav aid that you're receiving. Let's turn off the taxi lights. Always remember that VORs don't know which way your aircraft is heading. Right. We'll turn off the taxi light. Once you've tuned a VOR station on NAV1, you can use the NAV1 VOR indicator uh, by turning the OBS, which is the Omni Bearing Selector, uh, to either a desired radial that you want to fly from or a course that you want to fly to the station. Well, so far so good. I think the instructions are uh, quite educational. Uh, I would probably hope for Your a little VOR less. Your indicator will have either a needle which swings from side to side and is pivoted at the top or a bar which moves horizontally from side to side. See, I, again, I think the frequency of the uh, messages is, is a bit too high for my liking. Uh, personally, uh, so they kind of just come in as as uh, you know as you progress through the flight. But uh, when you're about to intercept the VOR radial you have selected, the CDI will be moving toward the center, and you'll want to be on the course you've selected when it gets there. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the parking brake, and let's go ahead and now turn on landing lights, strobes. Mixture on rich and the runway is a very long Let's runway. Let's turn the landing lights off. Uh, so we don't really need... Okay, you've finished taxiing and are about to take off. Current visibility is one zero zero miles. The wind is two two nine at eight. Watch your steering. Use the rudder to neutralize your... So I'm not sure what it was expecting us to do to actually come you on. You can lift the nose wheel at 55 knots. Let's get going. Accelerate faster. Let's turn gently. Let's keep us straight until we're airborne. Right. Use the rudder to neutralize yaw. Let's get going. Accelerate faster. 
Some very strong winds here. Um, Let's keep us straight until we're airborne. Use the rudder to neutralize your. We're ready to rotate. Okay, let's rotate. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to climb to about... Use right rudder to neutralize any yawing to the left. Uh, Our best angle of climb speed is 62 knots. Our best rate of climb speed is 74 knots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb to about uh, 5,000, say 5,000 If we encounter feet. heavy turbulence, we need to be at or below maneuvering speed. And remember, this will decrease as we burn fuel. And once In this aircraft, we <laughs> normally turn with a 20 degree bank. And with a 20 degree bank, we want to begin our rollout from the turn about 20 degrees before reaching our desired heading. All right, I'm going to begin a left turn now. And I'm going to start now uh, about 5,400, I think, would be a good altitude uh, for this flight. Let's look at leaning the mixture. Okay, let's lean the mixture. I don't feel so good. What was that? <laughs> okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce our speed a little bit. And let's... Uh, Severe thunderstorms generally occur in air masses with dew points above 21 degrees Celsius. That's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, takeoff distance increases by 1% for every 1 degree Celsius above the standard temperature for the runway being used for takeoff. Okay, we've finished taking off and are now cruising. Let's cruise between 2100 and 2700 RPM and lean the mixture to obtain maximum RPM above 3000 feet. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to keep flying at uh, the current heading. Uh, the airport is to our left now. So what I'm going to do momentarily, uh, as soon as we clear the land here, I'm going to make a left turn and then we're going to tune the ILS frequency to NAV1 and then we're going to intercept the... Uh, I'm very glad that you checked that the elevator was functioning freely and correctly before we took off. Whenever yeah. we use a wet grass runway, we can expect an increase in takeoff distance of around 30%. It's good to see that you checked that the ailerons were functioning freely and correctly before you took off. So again, uh, <laughs> what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a left turn as we you clear the... the rudder was functioning freely and correctly before takeoff. Well done. Whenever a runway is grass but dry, we can expect the landing distance to increase by about 15%. It won't allow me to speak. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a left turn as soon as we clear the land there. And then we're going to tune in the ILS frequency and then we're going to land. Now, FS Flying School automatically detects which runway. What's that uh, smell? Uh, it, it Next automatic time you need to make sure you perform the run-up procedure before you take off. Um, so it will automatically detect the, uh, uh, the runway uh, that you intend to land on based on the aircraft heading and which runway is uh, is line you know which runway you line up with so uh so yeah so we're going to make our turn momentarily all right i think that's good enough let's go ahead and make a left turn okay now as you can see the airport is uh, right to our left and what i'm going to do is i'm going to reduce speed and what I'm going to do here is tune We're the to the left of the radial we've selected. So let's fly towards the CDI. DME distance is two miles. Nav one is tuned to India, Mike, Oscar, Yankee. Let's turn the landing lights off. Okay, we're about to land. 
You've set the OBS to one, six, four degrees. All right. Line up with the center line. You're too high. I spy with my little eye something beginning with Sierra. Okay, the CDI is centered. Get lined up with the runway. We're to the right of the radial we've selected, so let's fly towards the CDI. One thousand feet. Get lined up with the runway. We're landing significantly above sea level, so remember landing distance increases 5% for every 1,000 feet of altitude. Get lined up with the runway. Let's use pitch to control our airspeed and power to control our rate of descent. Five hundred feet. We're landing at runway one six left. Elevation is four two two seven feet. There's a crosswind from the right, so use rudder to point down the center line and some right bank to stop drifting sideways. Four hundred feet. Okay, the CDI is centered. Remember you'll flare at about ten to fifteen feet, raising the nose about ten degrees. Three hundred feet. At 10 to 15 feet, reduce power to idle and flare. Two hundred feet. One hundred feet. You're below the glide slope. Let's intersect it. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty feet, flare, ten, touchdown, crosswind from right, so gradually increase right aileron <laughs> to full as we slow down to keep the right wing down, Kilo, Sierra, Lima, Charlie, well that was a pretty rough landing, and uh, it's just that the controls are so touchy on this uh, on this default. Okay, Cessna. let's slow down to a safe taxi speed. All right. Watch your steering. <laughs> okay. I rate your landing at ninety four point five zero points. Approach was ninety percent for the glide slope and ninety percent for the localizer. Nav one is tuned to India, Sierra, Lima, Charlie. All right, let's go ahead and uh, stop the aircraft here, and let's turn off the strobes. Watch your steering, and we'll turn off the landing uh, lights as well. And let's kill the engines. There's room for improvement. That flight contained problems you need to work on. Check your logbook. Okay, we're starting a new flight. Okay, let's go ahead and take that. Uh, that was really entertaining. Now, the only the only thing that uh, they kind of because I'm I guess because I'm making a video and I want to speak to you guys, it was a bit difficult to Switch coordinate. Switch the nav lights off unless you intend to start. Yeah. All right, let's turn everything off. Okay, so it was a bit difficult for me to coordinate what I wanted to say to you guys with the uh, because I couldn't anticipate when the instructors were going to say something. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, logbook, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is what we've got here. We've got the Q8 pilot piloting Cessna 172. This is our flight plan. This is the flight duration. Landing score 94.5. Not bad. Landing was successful in the following areas. Good glide slope on ILS approach, 90%. Good alignment with runway on ILS approach, 90%. Gentle touchdown, 125 uh, FPM. Good landing speed, not too fast, 61. Landed on the runway surface. Glide slope held until flare. Um, 
Good pitch control after touchdown, good pitch at landing, heading aligned with runway throttle was idle. Nicely handled crosswind. And this is landing including the following problems. Poor steering after landing. Steer, uh, stay on the center line. Definite room for improvement. The flight score was 88.56. The flight uh, commended in the following areas. Smooth turns, nice banking, comfortable uh, G-forces, smooth pitch control. Uh, flown with an aircraft, maximum speed, safe taxi speed, smooth braking during taxi, uh, smooth climb during takeoff, wings level near ground, well-coordinated turns, no stalls, no flying dangerously close to stall speed, smooth comfortable descent rate, pitch not too high, pitch not too low, approach speed not too fast, low altitude speed not too fast, good clearance of obstacles, flight including the following problems. Dangerous taxi turns. These cause discomfort and stress. Poor steering during takeoff. Uh, stay in the center line of the runway. Late rotation when VR is reached takeoff. Definite room for improvement. Okay, so as you can see, the it, it's quite extensive. The, the kind of things that um, FS Flying School monitors and reports is, is quite extensive and it's quite fun to actually look at how you how well you've done and where you can uh, improve. Well, guys, this brings us to the conclusion of our video today. Uh, as a closing remark on FS Flying School 2017, personally, I think it's immense fun. It's a very entertaining, very educational uh, plugin. It will certainly uh, keep you engaged uh, for many hours. Uh, it's a lot of fun to see that it also monitors just about everything that you do from uh, from departure to landing. And there are a few things I didn't show you guys in this video, which is during cruise, for example, you can ask your instructor to give you a, a challenge to perform by hitting shift control and C. And it will actually ask you to do something, maybe a bank, maybe a stall, um, something like that. So it, it depends on your instructor's mood at the time, I guess. But definitely for 35, uh, I beg your pardon, for $34, I think this, uh, this plugin is definitely worth it. And again, I've purchased this program. Uh, I am under no pressure to, you know, to, to recommend it or to tell you that it's great. I've paid for it myself. And I think it's really a great plugin. It's a lot of fun. So until next time, guys, uh, please take care of yourselves and each other. If you have any questions, please do post them in the comment section below, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye for now.